Hello, everyone. Hi. Welcome to CEO Check-In on this Wednesday. You have made it to half of your week. Congratulations. I know the days have a tendency to all blend together around now, but it is in fact Wednesday. And um, today I wanted to talk about, hi, Louisa. Good to see you. Um, today I wanted to talk before we get started with the live coaching. And Louisa, I'd love to go live with you and hear what you're up to. I wanted to talk about knowing and naming our feelings. And let me tell you what I mean by that, which is, you know, as CEOs, the way we show up impacts our entire team. So I had an experience today. Hi, Nicole. Oh, thanks for the congrats, Louisa. Yeah, the summit went great last week. We're super happy about that. But actually, I showed up on Monday morning in a way that really did not work for one of my team members. And she was absolutely right. We unpacked it today. And it turns out that the Monday after the summit, after we held this huge live event for 250 people, we've been working for weeks on it, and we, you know, just pushed everything aside to make that 100% as great as it could be, and we were super proud of it. But then Monday came around, and I was feeling really anxious about all the things we had to get done that we had put off. We have new programs starting. There were access codes that need to go out, emails, follow-ups, so many things they needed doing. And instead of kind of knowing that I was feeling stressed like that, I got on a call on Monday morning with my chief of staff and like snapped at her and wanted things and showed up in a way that made her feel really not great. And thank goodness we have weekly check-ins where we talk about our relationship and how to make sure we're on the same page. We talk about what worked, what didn't. They're, they're just our check-ins, she and I, not check-in like this, CEO check-in. Hi, Rabia. And during that check-in, we unpacked what happened because she really hadn't felt great about it. And we realized together that, well, I'll give her more credit. No, she realized what I should have done and I am going to do it next time. Uh, and it's the thing I want to talk about today, which is the, the naming, the knowing and the naming of our feelings. So let's say that I could rewind and Monday morning I woke up and I realized, you know what? I feel so good about our summit, but I know that I am now feeling stressed about everything we have to get done. And I'm going to name that when I talk to my chief of staff and say, hey, here's where I'm coming from today. So can you help me get through this or take everything I say with a grain of salt or at least just get on this same page with me? But I didn't do that. Instead, we launched into this meeting. And then the first thing that came up that I didn't like, I snapped and was like, no, don't do it that way. And we kind of got into a little conflict. And I hate that because we have a great relationship. And, you know, I only want us to enjoy working together and enjoy each day. So when we unpacked it just this morning, just about an hour ago, it made me realize that one of the mindset tricks or tips or best practices, whatever you want to call them, that is so crucial as a leader is to know how to know and name your feelings. And that sounds super simple, right? But in fact, we often just kind of power through as leaders and say, well, you know what, I'm feeling stressed or, you know, right now we're all collectively grieving, right, during this pandemic for the life we used to have for things that used to be easy that are harder now. You know, I just in the last five minutes before this realized I don't have the right cable and other pieces are in the other parts of the house. And I used to have a team of, you know, two or three people to help me set up all these live things. And now it's just me, you know, and actually my 12 year old son, I'm super grateful. Adrian helped me set up today. The kids have been taking turns helping me set up, but you know, we're allowed to grieve those things and we're allowed to have days where we feel overwhelmed and scared and anxious, but what we're not allowed to do or what we shouldn't do is just internalize that and power through, which we're so good at doing as CEOs, right? That's part of the job sometimes is just stuff down our feelings and power through. But right now is not one of those times when it's good to do that, if it's ever good to do that. Right now is a time when knowing how to know and name what you're feeling is a critical leadership skill. And, you know, this came home to me when I was watching this documentary last night with my kids. We were watching the second half of the Diana Nyad documentary. If you were with me at the summit, you know that I've been rereading re her book, Find a Way. And it's all about how she swam from Cuba to Florida at the age of 64, which is a 52 hour swimming feat. Just unbelievable. Nothing like that has ever been achieved before. The book is 
fantastic. And we watched the documentary. And at one point she was stung by these box jellyfish, which are actually lethal. A lot of people just immediately die from them. She is so strong and her mindset is so dialed in and she was so focused on her goal that she was able to just kind of like deal with the pain and actually keep swimming, which is unbelievable because most people would just be straight to the ER after that. But one thing that jumped out at me is that when she was stung, the way she handled this intense pain that was going all through her body, it goes right to your lungs, you feel like your skin's on fire from what she described in the book, is she started saying out loud, pain, 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 I feel a lot of pain, pain, pain. And there's a really valuable lesson in that because when you're experiencing something that's really, really hard, the best thing to do is to name it. And I talked on one of these other CEO check-ins about going to a self-compassion retreat, something I did um, last year, actually, after the summit, because last year I was even more spent after the summit. This year wasn't actually quite as bad because I had such an amazing team. But I went to a self-compassion retreat. And one of the things we were taught is that when you're feeling something really hard, naming it actually takes away a lot of the power. Part of what's so hard about bad feelings, whether it's grieving someone you lost or deep fear or anxiety or sadness, is just keeping it all in and not saying what's happening. So I want to encourage all of us to, especially in these times when we're under a lot more mental duress. You know, I left my home over six weeks ago. I really miss Manhattan. I miss my way of life. I feel so lucky to have this time with my mother and my boys. But you know, I had the life I wanted, exactly the life I wanted, and I want to get back to it. I am moving back in a couple of weeks. But we are allowed to grieve what we've lost, and we are allowed to have days, hi, Marion, where we just feel like, you know what, I'm not doing well today. And so that's why I do encourage us to practice this mindset skill of knowing and naming. And if you need to have a visual for it, think about Diana Nyad, you know, going pain, 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 because Knowingly or unknowingly, she was doing something considered a mindset best practice. If you're feeling sadness or you're missing someone terribly, you know, a lot of us now can't see people we love. I happen to be quarantining with my mother and my boys. Well, their boys are with me half the time. So I do get to see people I love a lot, but I'm aware that a lot of people can't have coffee with people they love anymore and can't do anything that involves a real hug, right? Not a virtual hug. So on the days when that's feeling really hard, or maybe it's just a moment, to just say it out loud, right? Like missing, really missing, really missing my brother, you know, really missing having brunch with my friends, really missing waking up and not wondering what the death count is today, right? They're just things that we don't have in our lives anymore and we're allowed to miss them. So when you're having those feelings, please remember, know it, name it. And if you have a team, show up to your meeting saying, hey, here's how I'm doing today. And how are you doing? and give people a chance to know and name where they are too. And I think you'll find that everyone is gonna show up in a lot better state and a lot more ready to do the work that still needs to be done. In fact, the work is like 10 times harder right now, right? Because people are just overwhelmed and busy trying to find food and following the latest news and wondering when there's gonna be testing. So as business owners, it's even harder to get the attention of our customers. So I'm glad we had a chance to talk about that. Hi, Marianne Keyline. She said, love this mindfulness tip. This is on Facebook for my Instagram friends. She said, my first time on the show, my friend told me about you. Oh, great. Well, welcome, Marianne. CEO check-ins, the format, for those of you who are new to us, is we do I do a mindset teaching each week, each, week, each show. I'm a mindset expert. Um, and I have a podcast called Million Dollar Mind, which I invite you to check out if you like all things mindset. That's where I interview successful entrepreneurs and leaders about the shifts that they had to make to become who they are today with a specific focus on mindset. And then I do some live coaching. So I think we're getting to that part. And welcome if it's your first time. Marion, hi, Rabia, who is uh, my pal on these. I love always seeing you show up. Um, and Marion Constantine Stoica, who was at the summit, the virtual summit, says, Julia, I was thinking of making a studio in which to make advertising videos here in Romania in Bucharest. Oh, very cool. That's a great idea. I mean, you know, this is a really good time to just try things, right? Right now, people are not expecting everything to be all buttoned up and perfect, right? This is not my usual set. <laughs> I don't have my usual, uh, you know, things I would have when I was going live. But right now, people are showing up with their hair in a ponytail and they haven't put their makeup on. And if you do a studio and it's not perfect, that's okay. 
The fact is, this is a time when you can experiment. This is a time when you can play. And we don't know when that time will come again. So if there's anything you were thinking of doing before the pandemic hit, you know, like actually I wanted to go live more and I wasn't doing it. So I started doing it during this time and now I'm really enjoying it. And who knows, maybe I'll keep going like this. So what's that thing for you? Is there something where for the last year or two years you've been wondering, hey, maybe I should try, you know, blogging every week or maybe I should try doing Facebook Lives or Instagram Lives like I'm doing right now, or, my, or like my friend Louisa made a beautiful video right after she recovered from COVID-19 that she shared with all of her community. And she just showed up so powerfully and so beautifully. And who knows if she'd ever made a video like that before, right? But she was moved and wanted to share her experience. And I'm so glad she did because as someone who loves her and wants to support her, I was able to really understand what she had gone through and get some good tips about what to do if this should happen to me or someone I love. So thank you for that, Louisa. Um, let's see if somebody wants to go live and get some coaching today. I see we have Anu with us. Great to see you, Anu. Anu runs the Rural Painter. Talk about taking risks. She's been doing a lot ever since uh, this yeah, quarantine time. Um, Anu has been posting beautiful images of her artwork that she sells and she's been doing a lot more on social media. So I really want to give you a big shout out for that, Anu. And if you'd like to go live with us, just send me a little request and I will put you on live here. Um, let's see who wants to get a little live coaching today. I did promise my son that we would stop right at 1230 because he has his math class. So we're not going to run over today. Uh, let's see. Last time we ran over because Denise came on. She's so fantastic. Denise from Watch Her Work. She is a masterclass graduate and someone who also coaches and goes live. Um, she's helping women to up their professional, uh, advance professionally, executive women. So let's see, I am waiting for requests or I can just put out a request to you. So let me see who else is here. Um, Marion, would you like to go live and we can talk about your new idea? Let's see, I'm pressing on your name. Marion, send me a little request if you'd like to go live or it's simply speech. Would you like to go live? Um, if you haven't been coming to these CEO check-ins and you like the mindset tips, I have started every single CEO check-in with a different mindset tip. So if you go back to my YouTube page, it's just Julia Pimsler coach. You can find all the old CEO check-ins and each one starts with a mindset tip, a little bit like one I shared today. I'm a trained NLP expert, that's neuro-linguistic programming. And neuro-linguistic programming has so many great tools and best practices for having a really strong, healthy mindset. Uh, my next book is actually all about mindset and what, what we call in our community, the go big mindset because you might have heard of growth versus fixed. This is the based on this Carol Dweck book called Mindset that some of you may have read. And her book puts forward the idea that you either have a growth or a fixed mindset. A fixed mindset is where you think you were born with a certain amount of intelligence and a certain amount of abilities, natural abilities, and that it would be very hard or near impossible to exceed those abilities. So if you have that kind of fixed mindset, you're nervous about trying new things because you think you're not good at them. If you fail, you feel really awful and say, oh, hey, you know, I'm not good at that. I knew I wasn't good at that. I'm never doing that again. And then the other kind of mindset is called the growth mindset, which is what she encourages us, encourages us to have in the book, which is where you're constantly learning looking to get better, think that you have an endless ability to grow and learn and morph and improve, no matter what you started out with, what your natural ability was in life. And so this has become a very common thing to be referred to, growth versus fixed. Now, in my view, there's a whole other mindset as well that draws on the growth mindset, but isn't just the growth mindset, which is the go big mindset. And that is the mindset that's needed if you have really big goals and want to reach them. Because there's a lot of um, kind of easy talk out there about, you know, like, oh, well, go for it and go big and do the one thing that scares you. And that's all great. And that can kind of get you off the starting block. 
But what I've seen from working with thousands of successful entrepreneurs is that it's really everything that happens after you get off the starting block that matters. I mean, I know so many people who started their businesses just before this pandemic hit, and they didn't at all anticipate that they would have to put everything on pause, pivot, find new ways of serving customers and clients. So they started, but then they hit a huge obstacle, which was this pandemic. And that's where mindset comes into play. Which people are going to say, you know what? It wasn't meant to be. So forget it. I'm not starting my business. I was going to start my business. And then this huge international pandemic hit. And so I'm going to back away. And which people are going to see this as an opportunity to find a whole new way of doing business. That is the go big mindset where you set a goal, you're so determined to get there that you're able and willing to find the various paths and not get too, too attached to the how. That's another part of the go big mindset. People who have this go big mindset, they set a big goal, they get really fired up about it, and then they stay very open to the different possible ways of getting there. Um, it's almost like if you're you know, trying to climb to the top of a mountain, is there just one path? No, usually not. Usually there are several different ways to get there. So if one path doesn't work, okay, you just reroute, right? When the GPS takes you on a different road because you turned the wrong way and you get right back on track. And that's a lot easier said than done because often when you hit these big obstacles, it feels like, oh, this just wasn't meant to be, or oh, I'm just not up to it, or oh, it's just too hard. Right. And this is why not very many people reach their dreams because they do get discouraged along the way. And I'm not talking about like a day where you feel down or an hour where you just cry and say, hey, this really sucks. We all have that from time to time. It's what do you do after that? How do you get back up? How do you stay motivated? Who do you call for help? Do you call anyone for help or do you just, you know, keep it all inside and decide, oh, well, I just must not be very good. All of this is part of what I call the go big mindset. And there are some really tried and true ways to get and keep the go big mindset. And that's really what I'm interested in teaching now in my new book and concepts we've been working on for the last you know, five years almost in the Million Dollar Women community, where mindset is a big part of everything we do. So I hope that was helpful. You got a little extra mindset teaching today. Let's see if anybody wants to go live. Um, okay, Marion is maybe ready to go live. No, her internet connection is not great. Okay, breathe with Sheena. Hello, welcome, Judith Harmon. Welcome. We would have time for one person to go live for coaching. So if someone wants to join me, now would be the time to put your hand up. And if not, I will see you back here on Monday. Um, because we're now doing CEO check-ins just Monday and Wednesday. Next Friday, we're doing a one hour. Oh, hi. Welcome, Louisa. Hey, so great to you? see you. I am doing great. How are you today? I'm doing well. Thank you. Good. How's Ariana? She's doing fabulous. She's got a new little guinea pig. And, oh. Uh, we did a contract. Uh, I told her mommy was busy working and I cannot be on top of her all day, so we did a contract. I said, what do you want more than anything? And she said, a guinea pig, and we set out everything she has to do on a daily basis, and she's done it all for 30 days. I love that. That is so awesome. What's the name of the guinea pig? Chubby Chubs. Chubby Chubs. <laughs> Hilarious. Well, please give her a big hug for me. I've been thinking about you because you started your business right before the pandemic and it was in the events space, sports and events, you know, your global tourism concept was so cool, but now of course it's on hold. So what have you been doing during this time? That's what you said. I was, I felt so, so felt for you, and I'm so sorry you had to go through that. Exactly. I couldn't breathe. Um, I was clogging up blood. I mean, it was horrible, guys. I had no energy. And I think everything happens for a reason because if I had not gone through that, I think I would have been stressing out the whole business side of things. But I realized that if I am waking up every morning and I am opening up my eyes and I can breathe, I am more than blessed. 
That's a win right there. Yes. My mindset that number one, I have my health, my family's healthy, and everything else, we will get through it, right? So yes. Now that I'm back into it, I've been working out, um, reading, I have been uh, really focusing on my business. And I believe my two key words right now is pivoting and diversifying my portfolio. So sports and tourism, I'm thinking of a short-term strategy that's going to impact our long-term goals, but also diversifying my portfolio through my network and going into completely different industries um, and really taking this time to create new opportunities. And so that's what I've been doing. Um, well, Louisa, you have such a strong network. You know, the people you've worked with love you so much. I know some of them personally, and we all just glow about you. So I am curious, what did you do? Like, when? how did you activate your network? Because that is advice I've been giving people is go back to your current network. How did you do it? Well, I think um, a few things. One, uh, LinkedIn is so important, right? Um, I think that's where I, I, I've been coaching a lot of people on, on how to really uh, use their network to diversify their portfolio. And so going on LinkedIn and really putting content that people are interested in and sending messages and doing Zoom calls, um, I have connected with more people in the last three weeks that I, I mean, it's amazing. How do you reach out? I think it would really help people to know how you reach out. Do you like write them a message on LinkedIn and say, hey, do you want to jump on a call? Or how do you do it? Yeah. So I have a lot of my clients on my Facebook and on my Instagram, and that one is a little bit more personal. So for example, uh, this weekend, on Saturday, I just said, I love to dance. I want to dance. I was like, ready to dance, and I'm like, I'm going to go live. And I started dancing, and I danced for an hour. Um, last night, I danced uh, with Ariana. We were dancing for a cause, uh, childhealth.org, uh, which is an organization that's helping families right now, as we all know, domestic violence is through the roof. So what I have done is really do things that I love to do to connect with people. And then people start writing to me and I start writing to them and they send me emails and it's like, oh my God, I saw you dancing. I really needed that. Um, I love that. And it's so organic. Let me just repeat for the Facebook people, because we have people on Facebook too. So Louise has been reaching out to her network through LinkedIn and Facebook and Instagram. And I was saying, well, how exactly did you do it? And she's really just being her. Like she loves to dance and she started having a dance party and invited people and a lot of people jumped on. And then that leads to follow up texts and emails where you're checking in with people. Take us through the next step because you know we have all CEOs watching. Like then how do you turn that into something that can help your business? I mean, I know you were just doing it because you're you and you love to dance and inviting people in, but then some of it does lead to business. How did that part happen? Right. So then um, I guess from that is people see you on other conference calls, on webinars, and it's like another point of connection. And then sending actual um, emails to or text messages to say like, hey, how are you? And I think the most important thing right now is checking in on a personal level. I agree. Starting like, how are you? How's your family? How are your kids? How's your mom? Are you guys okay? Like anything you need, I'm here for you. And then the conversation starts like, oh my God, Luis, I haven't heard from you in like three years. Last time I saw you was in Brazil. Let's get on a call. Perfect. Let's get on a call. And that's how these opportunities start coming up is really, you know, you start on a personal note because I think you mentioned this a few weeks back in one of your coaching sessions. Right now, it's not about selling. Right? It's about serving. Yes. Right? First connect, first embrace on a, a human level. Absolutely. And the opportunities come up, like, great. Um, but I'm not going in with the mindset of, of, of selling or, or my business. I'm going in with the mindset of, how are you? How can I help you? Yes. Well, let me paraphrase that because there was so much in that that's so great that, you know, when you reach out to people, it's important, Louisa was saying to, you know, just start from that really personal place of like, how are you? How's your family? What's been the hardest part? Is there anything I can do to help you? Because nobody wants to dive right into business right now. No one's in that mindset. And then after you've connected personally, then there might be a moment where you realize, hey, they're working on something you can help with or vice versa. Would you mind sharing with us, Louisa, like one business thing that came out of all these connections and phone calls? Yeah, so um, one of the really exciting things 
that came out of all of this. Um, it's a project that I'm going to be starting in uh, next fall. Um, it's going to be a new uh, show. Um, so I'm going to come in as an associate producer to the show, um, completely outside of sports and tourism, right? Wow, how exciting. What's the show about? Um, so it's, uh, it's going to be how uh, they bring in all of these CEOs, and then they break us up into sessions. And it's how they're going to give us different topics. And you have three days to solve a huge problem, a world problem. Wow. So um, it, I, I, I'm so excited. It was supposed to be filmed in the summer, but obviously with everything that's happening, it's been pushed to um, December. But the people that I have met there, um, it's just, I, I, I'm so excited because I'm going to be able to come with Ariana um, to be on the show. And... Um, for the first time, they're going to have like, CEOs and their moms. Um, so, like, the kids and their moms. No way. I love that. To have a topic that we have to fight. So, again, so wait, Ariana is going to be helping you solve this problem, too? That's amazing. Yeah. And, and it's going to be a group of 10 moms okay. and their kids, and we're going to solve a huge problem. Um, and, and, it's, it, and it's just amazing, right? Like, I can't wait to watch this. Is Chubby Chubbs going to be there, too? Is he going to get his TV debut? <laughs> I know. I might have to do that. So, so yeah, that's, you know, um, that's what I mean by diversifying your portfolio. Um, you know, you Yes. thinking completely outside of the box. Um, and, and, and be open. Be open to whatever the universe sends you. You know, it, although you're like probably like my, my business, here's a perfect example. My business is global tourism, sports, and entertainment. And now I'm like talking to TV shows to be on a show and be an associate producer for a show. So but of course, you and I both know, right, that exposure is exposure, right? Half the half the reason people do Shark Tank is not to get an investment, because by the way, a lot of those investments don't even happen, right? They do a big song and dance of, oh, we're going to invest, you know, 100,000. And then some of those deals don't even happen. I know from people who've been on the show, but it's worth going on the show just to get that exposure. So if you're going to be on television and with your 11 year old daughter is she 11 yet or she's still 10. She'll be 11 in two weeks. oh that's so cool happy birthday i have to wish her happy birthday when it's the actual day um but yes yeah, so that's going to be incredible for you and your business and you know it's such a great example thank you so much for coming on and sharing that that's going to give so many people hope and inspiration because you know just when you're thinking like oh god i don't know if my business is ever going to come back the way it was, well, maybe something really cool is going to come in its st instead, right? Or in addition, I was working with a coach this morning that had $600,000 worth of business evaporate because of the pandemic. She used to do all these live coachings for Fortune 500 and Fortune 100 companies. But for the first time ever, she's building a virtual part of her business. So when it comes back, when the business comes back, she'll still be able to do her live events, but she'll also have this virtual offering, which she never would have taken the time to build if we weren't in this time. Right. So thank you so much for sharing that. Connect the dots for us for a second, which is like, what? how did you connect with the person who then connected you with the show? We don't need like the whole story, but just to inspire someone like you sent an email, you got on a call, what happened? times a week at least and when you hashtag that is the power of LinkedIn so when you put hashtag business leadership whatever you want to post this connects all of us and earlier this year I have posted a story speaking of you just talked about the book that you're reading with the Cuban that swam to right yes find a way Yes, I love that about him being from an immigrant family. Yes. Yeah, his father. And this has gotten like 49,000 views on LinkedIn. Louisa, that's amazing. Wait, if people want to find it, can you put your, your LinkedIn in the chat so they can find you? Yeah. While you do that, this was an article she wrote about how Jeff Bezos came from an immigrant family and then looking at um, entrepreneurship through the immigrant lens. Exactly. So um, I put that in and, and, and it just started spreading like wildfire. And that's the thing that every time you post something 
and somebody like the, that is that person's entire network will now see you and you become discoverable. So I my I guess my uh, my advice to all of your uh, phenomenal CEOs on, on your on this platform today is use social media to your advantage. Post really awesome content. Don't get bogged down by all the craziness that's going on. There's still so many amazing things that are going on. Look at stories that inspire you. Right now, the world needs inspiration. And when we start putting positive messages out there and we start tagging, people are done with the news. Like, if you want bad information, like, they'll turn on the news. I think let's use social media to really inspire others. Um, and, 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 and I, because I asked them when they found me, I'm like, how did you guys find me? And they're like, well, we just kept on seeing that you were posting all this awesome content and um, we were really intrigued by you and wanted to know more about you. And, and that's how it came to be. That is amazing. And it's so deserved. You've been working so hard. You were working so hard on your company before all this happened. And you were in such an amazing place with your first clients and customers. And so I just love your beautiful mindset that even though you actually got COVID-19 and had to spend three weeks sick and really, you know, at some points fearing for your life, you've now completely bounced back because you have such a strong, beautiful mindset and an awesome daughter who fires you up every day. Um, and now, you know, you're following these new opportunities and who knows where they'll take you. I'm so excited for you, Louisa, and so happy we got this time with you today. Thank you for coming on. Please give Ariana a big hug from me. We will talk again soon. Thanks for the inspiration. Big hug for you. Bye. Have a great day. Thanks for coming on. Bye, honey. Bye. Oh, such fun. Well, it's it's worth having this show just to be able to connect with some of the incredible women I'm lucky enough to have in my circle, including Louisa. And if you want to watch some of the past shows, just go to my YouTube channel, Julia Pimsler Coach. Uh, before we jump off, because Adrian needs to do his math class. He's waiting to do his math class. So I have to go. My son, Adrian, who's about Ariana's age. Um, I wanted to tell you guys that I'm teaching a free workshop. It's called Thrive and it's how to market during these crazy times. And I'll be sharing success stories, just like we heard today from Louisa, of people who are making money, are making deals. How exactly are they doing it? They're all women from inside our community. So it's very cool. You can learn what they're doing and then connect with them to ask them. If you uh, were at our Million Dollar Women Summit, then you're also on our Slack channel. There are a lot of different ways to interact with Million Dollar Women. If you want to be part of that Thrive workshop, it's on Friday, May 8th. It's at 12 p.m. Eastern. And all you have to do is email Maddie, M-A-D-D-Y, at JuliaPim.com. Thanks for coming on, Louisa. So it's M-A-D-D-Y at JuliaPim.com. Oh, my cat just jumped on. This is Ripley. And um, we will get you signed up. Thank you for joining me today. Mwah. Have a wonderful day. And remember to know and name your feelings. Bye.